Hey, little sister, what's the worst show ever? That gets my goat. This isn't still the promo for Duper Remo. No, this is actual episodes. Okay. I just started telling some stupid story, and then I said that was an episode, and then as soon as I was done saying that, you started in with the, you saw Men in Tights, and we went for an hour. Did we really? No, we went for a half hour, though. Okay, well, this is the what I really wanted to talk about. It all goes back to Ass Hat Magic Spider, which was an episode we did recently on the show. Ass Hat Magic Spider! Oh, uh, that's, that's a callback in itself. Uh, it was written by Scott Westerfeld, and I believe that was my first exposure to Scott Westerfeld. That story, two, three years ago, was your first exposure as well, right? It was actually the time that he exposed himself to me was my first exposure. <laughs> No, yeah. Was, there are times, Mr. Data, <laughs> when I envy you. It was, uh, that story was the first uh, time that I read anything by Scott Westerfeld. And after that, I sought out a few of his things. And I listened to the audiobooks of Leviathan. Leviathan and Behemoth, or Behemoth, as they would say in other places. I'm not sure where, somewhere else. So Yesterday. And I read So Yesterday, which probably was my least favorite of his books and i started to read peeps and then we had to turn it back into the library and i never got around to checking peeps? it out again peeps you would probably enjoy that one you what is check peeps? it out peeps uh has to do with vampirism i believe really so you might want you might be interested in that checking that out i had not heard of that and i think in our asshat episode but you never mentioned Didn't peeps mention it. I only read like the first chapter and then yeah i had to turn it in it's hard for me to actually read a book because you had a public school education. Yeah. And I don't have time to sit and read things. I have too many things to do, like podcasting and that kind of crap. Don't hit to the show, please, folks. And then most recently, I think you had said uh, on the forum or something that since we were going to do a Scott Westerfeld story, you decided to read Uglies, Pretties, etc. And so I thought, huh, well, I'll read those too so that I can have a worthwhile conversation with them about it. And then we never talked about it. Well, let's have that right now, if that's okay. (laughs) I am just, well, not just now. By the time this episode airs, I will have finished Uglies, which is the first book in that series. Did you say it was called the Uglies Pretty series? It's just called the Uglies series? It's called the... I don't know what it's called. It It would make sense to be called the Uglies series just... Because that was the first book. Because that was the first one. Like the Twilight saga right first book is called twilight i don't think they've ever gone and had you know given it a overarching name like star wars or star trek or indiana jones or whatever but uglies makes sense i think they call it the leviathan trilogy too. yeah so and just the first book is called leviathan the second one's not called leviathan colon behemoth right anyhow in case you're not familiar with it and and it's okay i wasn't familiar with it Uglies is a science fiction Mm -hmm. book, takes place at some indeterminate future where when a young person turns 16, they have a procedure done to make them pretty with a capital P. Before that, they're litlies and they're uglies. And then they have surgery that takes out all of their defects, makes them like the perfect height, weight, width. And they girth. Get t- <laughs> yeah, they don't talk much of girth, but I would imagine girth <laughs> to make them like their best selves, their most beautiful selves or whatever. They become pretties and they get to go off and live in new pretty town. You know, away. They, they no longer need surround themselves with the ugly masses. Am I describing this well enough? Yeah, that I works. Don't, I don't mean to sound like I'm criticizing it. If if it sounds like that, I'm not. I'm just trying to describe the mindset of this world. Mm-hmm. And the main character is a girl named Tally, and she is 15 and just about to turn 16 and cannot wait to be pretty. And the summer before she turns 16, she meets this girl named Shay, right? Yes. She meets this girl named Shay, who is also an ugly like her, who happens to have the exact same birthday. And they sort of hit it off and become really good friends for the last, say, three months that they have before they turn 16. And Tally cannot wait to cast away this ugliness and imperfection and look at my face and look at my hair and yuck and my eyes. And eh. and Shay isn't like that at all. And she's like, you know, you look fine. You don't have a bad side and you should like yourself. You should like who you are. I like who I am. 
it is an interesting pair of characters right there at the very beginning. And I was finding myself, in spite of the asinine voice that the narrator chooses to do for Shay. <laughs> I told you, I warned you about that voice. Did you? I blocked it I out. I did. I said, still stick with it. It's worth it, even though... That voice makes her sound like the dumbest person. Oh, gosh, I remember you saying that, but I sort of, I didn't. I guess it's just, you know, the reader can do so many voices, and that's one of the voices you can do. I was, try I was trying to think of who that voice reminds me of. There's some somebody in a movie or a cartoon or something like that that actually speaks like that. And I, I want to say that her voice sounds like, what's her, the one from King of the Hill, the, the, the niece. The daughter. Oh, the niece. Or whatever she is uh, that... Juliet Lewis does. Is right. it Juliet Lewis? I thought it was what's her face that died. Brittany Murphy? Yeah, Brittany Murphy is the one that did that voice. Really? Yeah. But it does sound a lot like a Juliet Lewis kind of a voice too. It just it sounds like a really dumb person, unfortunately. And I and you know what, I, I gotta give the narrator credit for changing up her voice because a lot of them don't. And then also I can't be too critical because that podcastle episode I did I did a, maybe a s sillier voices than I needed to do for such a heartbreaking story. <laughs> but it was supposed to be a comedy. It was funny. <laughs> it was yeah, marketed well, as a comedy I anyways. can only rely on that crutch for so long, though. Because ultimately, I read the story, and it was up to me to decide how to perform it. And if I performed it in a way that turned people off as much as some of the audiobooks I've heard where somebody gives you a funny voice for your character because they think Homer Simpson's funny. And you're like, dude, I can't get past this stupid <laughs> voice. Then it's their fault. It's on uh, them. Or if there's a director in the booth, it's on that guy for not calling him on it. But this person's the name performed by or narrated by that the most fault needs to go on to. And so I'm, I'm willing to take that on yeah. Podcastle because if, if you didn't like it, that was my fault. So what you're saying is you had the chance to be a real podcaster. Uh-huh. And yes. you blew it. Indeed, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I feel like it's okay for me to be critical because that's what I do. I do that. Not for a living, unless you want to donate to the show, folks. But <laughs> Much more frequently. Otherwise, it won't be considered a living. But I do that, and we've done it enough that we've gotten as good as we're ever going to be at it. And if it's not good enough, then, you know, that's that's life. But you got to take a little pride in what you do every week. Mm -hmm. or what was it that they say? You you are what you do every day. Yes. And you, you always that's answer that. That's why I am known as a crapper. Oh. <laughs> no, in the past you'd say that's why they call you a wanker, remember? Ah. It's all right. We got to fill up each day with something. Yeah, I think it's time to end and start another day. Ready, go. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rish Outfield. I've only been a plague bird for a short while. This isn't a life I chose. Krista must perform her duty and punish a murderer. This is where Jennery killed the Alderman's son. He could have done so much for us. I've seen the murder. She threw the child off the dam. But something is strange about this village and its people. They are a new village. There's no record of another plague bird ever visiting here. Every moment you wait only makes the others fear plague birds a little less. You must be careful, plague bird. And Krista is about to find out if she is strong enough to survive. Come out, plague bird! Give up, and I promise all the quickness we can muster! <laughs> Ever Dreaming Verdict of Plagues, written by Jason Sanford, with the voice talents of Rish Outfield. We're a good match. L. Scribe Harris. Why can I see through it? James David Jackson. Have you ever dreamed of going to the stars? Paul Kerr. You are the plague bird. Veronica Belmont. Since when are there sides to plague birds? And narrated by Big Anklevich. While their justice would have been bloody, 
it would have also been far more merciful than what Krista was about to do. Find this and other full cast audio stories at the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine, a free podcast you can find on iTunes or at doonstief.com. Ha, 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 ha.